Hello. <laughs> so around this time in 2019, I was dying every day in the library, typing up my dissertation with one of my best mates, Chirag, for my research project for my third year at med school. It was really hard. But after going through that process and coming out on top, I feel like there's a lot that I want to share with you guys. So hopefully if you guys are in a position where you have to write a dissertation or you're going to have to write one soon, you won't feel as lost at the start. If you guys are new here, my name's Alfie. I'm a fifth year med student in London. And without the way, Let's start the video. Woo! So before I jump into my tips, I kind of want to start off with a little story. So at the start of third year, you can either pick your project from a list of projects that they give you, or you can go a little bit rogue and find a supervisor and a project on your own. Now, I did the second route because what I wanted to do was work with a pediatric cardiothoracic surgeon. Um, which basically is a heart surgeon for babies and kids. So I did this and I was given a project titled... What was the title again? I'm gonna have to read this off. So I was given the title of a mock circulatory system incorporating a compliant 3D printed patient-specific model to investigate the hemodynamics in a TCPC. Which sounds like a bunch of mumbo jumbo, but basically I was trying to recreate a model of a child's heart with the help of 3D printing and a few other things and then running a few experiments on that. I was super excited because 3D printing was one of those things from when I was in high school, which I thought was super cool. So I was like, Whew, okay, I finally get to try something like this. Now, because my main supervisor was a pediatric cardiothoracic surgeon, he was always super busy doing surgeries and saving lives. So I also needed another supervisor who was probably more invested into research and could spend more time with me. The project was a little bit of a combination with cardiovascular sciences, which is all about the heart, and mechanical engineering. So I also got two more supervisors from MechEng. And so in total, I had four supervisors, which is pretty rare. So right from the get-go, my project was already looking a little bit different. So if you guys want to see more about the whole process, I actually already made a video, I think last year, called I 3D printed the heart. So check that out because definitely is something which I'm super proud of. But with that little story out the way, we can jump into the tips for what I wish I had known at the start so I wouldn't have felt as lost. So my first tip is picking something that you actually like. I know this might sound like a no brainer, but it's super important. So when it comes to way before starting to write your dissertation, you wanna write about something that you actually like or at the very least have some kind of interest in. You can do that by picking a topic within a you know field that you like or finding a supervisor that's in that given field. You won't wanna invest time in something that you don't care about. You're not gonna feel motivated to learn more. You're not gonna feel motivated to do the extra reading. Those 7,000 or however many words you need to write are just gonna suck the living soul out of you if you don't care at all about what you're writing. Sometimes you are put in a position where you're given something which you don't really like. I think the best thing to do then is to try and speak to your supervisor to see what can be adjusted. So maybe if it's a topic that you're not super interested in, maybe the way that you're doing it, maybe rather than doing a systematic review, maybe you run an experiment because you wanna do something more practical. Or the other way, if you wanted to stay out of lab, you wanna do something at home, then you can do that. Now tip number two, pick a good supervisor. Now the other thing to really look out for before you actually start writing your disso as well is picking a good supervisor. This is a person who's gonna guide you, mentor you, teach you. You are not expected to know how to write one out of the blue without any sort of practice or guidance. Now, sometimes it's hard to tell if a supervisor is good or not, but do some asking around. Ask seniors, do you know anyone who's been under this person? Oop. Do you know how much time they spend with their students? Are they nice? You could also just ask the supervisor yourself. Sometimes supervisors say, oh, um, I'll be around three to four times a week, so just find me whenever you want. But actually, in reality, they might be really hard to get hold of. So during my experience, I ended up with four supervisors, so thankfully, I could grab hold of at least one of them whenever I had a problem. For me, I feel like the hardest person to reach was the surgeon, but that was fair enough because he was having a difficult time every single day with these really tricky surgeries on these really small hearts. Having a good supervisor means you can Having a good supervisor means you can have someone who's going to answer all your questions Spend the time to sit with you when you get stuck and just give you good advice It doesn't mean that they're going to do all the work for you though You're going to have to show that you're invested in the work and that kind of interest sparks them to put effort with you 
So the next tip is to make sure that you're organized from the start. That means making a schedule or a timetable at the start with all the important days that you need to know and then breaking up the work so that it fits in the schedule. And so that way you don't end up burning up by like cramming everything all into the last week. And being organized also means keeping all your important papers and things like that all in one place and putting them into applications like Mendeley. I used to make the mistake of doing references at the very end and I just remember panicking at the last minute and trying to manually write out the references. Do not do that. It is not worth that kind of stress. Get something, it doesn't matter which app you use, but as long as you have something that's organized so that at the very end you can just kind of have all your papers and then with one button you can have your references in whatever style you need to. Alright, so moving on to my fourth tip, don't be afraid to keep on asking questions. I think right now a lot of people are struggling because you're gonna have to be doing your whole research project online and then from that one of those problems you're gonna get is obviously a lack of like face-to-face -face time with people on the research team, your supervisor, amongst other things. Despite this, you have to make sure you try your best to take the initiative and ask questions and ask for help when you need it. I think a lot of people, especially at my age, don't really want to ask for help. We have this mindset where it's like, nah, 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 it's fine. I'll just figure it out. I'll search something up. I'll just do it myself. I'm sure I'll figure it out. I'm definitely guilty of that as well, where if I might run into a problem, rather than asking someone who actually knows how to do it, I might just try and bulldoze my way through the problem. But if you're at university or at whatever stage you're at and you're doing something where you have this team and you have the support and you have this help and you're not fully taking advantage of that then what are you doing if you've never used this app then just ask if you don't know how to put all your data together then just ask if you're struggling with even just understanding the things that you're finding out just ask but yeah, so learn from my experience and don't just try to bulldoze your way through everything. So the final tip I have is to read a lot of papers. I think the hardest thing about writing a dissertation for the first time anyways, is just not knowing really how to style everything, how to lay out everything, how much to write in each section and things like that. These are all the things that people don't really sit down with you and explain. The only way you're gonna kind of figure out how you're meant to structure things, how you're meant to style things is by reading lots and lots of the material. You're gonna get loads of good information that you can put into your paper just by reading stuff. So I would start off quite general, like places like Google and things like that, and then I would try and get more specific by looking into places like PubMed and ResearchGate, and there's loads of different places you can look. It doesn't matter particularly where it's from, as long as it's good quality and it's relevant to your research. Anyways, that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope you guys found that useful, and I hope you guys enjoyed that. Do comment down below and like the video because that really helps out with the algorithm. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.